What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Mehran Podcast. Today, my guest is again Alex Belmar. For this episode, we pick up right where we left off at the end of episode 17. We talked about Alex progressing again in 2013, finishing fourth at X Games, and then having a huge bummer in his career of missing out on the Sochi Olympics because of a knee injury. We also talked about him achieving his childhood dream of winning an X Games medal in 2015, and the challenge of keeping up with the insane progression of trying tricks that keep getting riskier and riskier. We also talked about another big accomplishment of his, of qualifying for the Canadian Olympic team and going to the 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics. Big thank you to this episode's sponsors, Access Board Shop, Tree Fort Lifestyles, J Skis, Decans Restaurant, Planks Clothing. Let's go! So going into 2013, then you already had a lot of big steps, like you were getting on trips with Armada, you had done Euro X, Dew Tour, then the next step was 2013, your first X Games. Yeah, there was also Dew Tour before that, and I think I did pretty good. I believe I got sixth, but I'm not sure. I know I made finals at every Dew Tour at Breck except the first one, I mm. think. But anyway, so yeah, I did good at Dew Tour, and then I got a spot at X Games, And that went super well. I just wish I got third, but <laughs> yeah, you unfortunately ended up I didn't. Yeah, I got fourth. I was bummed. As as good as I had skied and all that, I was still bummed. And that yeah. also is a crazy run. Thanks. Yeah, the switch four was like brand new. I just learned it at Breck like First real two trick. weeks ago, not even. And I saw Woodsy, actually I saw Woodsy do the switch tails four on a down rail at the Copper Grand Prix prior to the x games and i was like holy crap that's the coolest trick of like you're like no there's no way that you can do that and he did it so i was like okay i went and then learned it and 2013 was a time when people were doing bigger tricks and slope in in rail tricks mm -hmm. but still you would see the the casual like 270 on to forward yeah yeah like, stuff like that yeah for sure so, and i just picked up rockstar too and i'm seeing the helmet right now i was hyped switch tails for on back to into lip too so that's really yeah like that similar, similar to, to, Euro to Euro X. you're right misty gapping the whole <laughs> rail yeah that was my thing it was a wow factor then that's what kills me i think i really on, wanted to do a switch out. dub off that box but i didn't dub 10 japan i learned it with japan on that contest right dub 12 mute i learned that like two weeks before with abm it was so sketchy at break were you like The two guys motivating each other, saying oh, like, yeah. oh, we got to learn it. We were like on a mission. ABM went to that X Games too, and we were tr like trying to up our right side game. Yeah. And I had learned, like I had done right 12s at, um, at Whistler Summer Camp, but they were like sketchy yeah. and scary. And so at Breck, me and ABM worked on those a bit. And I remember Oystein Broughton, who wasn't the Oystein that we know now, was mm -hmm. over there and he was like, kind of looking up to me and him like yeah you got this man like you're able you're so cool and all that and then years later he ended up winning every single yeah. contest that we were in so yeah it's crazy, crazy how you you got tricks quickly it's like yeah, every time it's like i yeah. need to learn it so i'll i'll learn it yeah for sure but i think that's what it is when you're young and like that's well i think it's the mindset because abm still did that for a lot of, he's still doing that today Yeah. Because he's not young anymore. Yeah. And but he's still like he's, doing new tricks. Yeah. I guess you're right. You're right. This year. Yeah. But I guess he's still crazy and I'm just not crazy anymore because <laughs> when I was young, it was easy because I was like, okay, that's what you got to do. Just do it. But now I'm just like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to go chill. I remember filming with him pr the spring before that in, while in Whistler that I was talking about and He was trying dub to right dub 12s, like he was right. learning them and yeah. eating shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He struggled. I don't think he ever really did them anymore. Like, I he he. I remember because yeah, his he, slope runs are always switch right dubs. Yeah, yeah. And he did a right dub 14 at Breck when we were practicing those right oh, 12s. Yeah. He did a right dub 14 by mistake and um, stomped or like back. No, probably back slapped ah. and shit. Yeah, but no, you're right. He kind of just gave up on that trick. 
hmm. four TEDx games in 2013. Yeah. Another step up after being fifth, yeah. sixth at Due Tour, fifth at Euro X, then fourth at X Games. Yeah, for sure. Were you like craving for some podiums at that time? I, I mean, I was craving for that podium, to be honest. Like, I thought my run was going to be it, and it wasn't. And I felt really good about my skiing, so I, I was hoping I'd get on it, but it's okay. In hindsight, it's fine. Um, but yeah, I wanted to be on the podiums. I knew I could be at that point. It was pretty obvious. I just had to figure out my on that dub mm -hmm. game. And I did that at X Games, So I knew that every contest from that point on was like game a on. possibility. Yeah. Cause you were on par pretty much on par in terms of jump tricks at that point. Yeah. Yeah. And like one of the best guys. In yeah. Terms of I, rails. Could, I could hope that my rail would be the little sauce yeah. that you want just to make it so then what was your highlights in 2013 after that i know you you think you mentioned it but you blew your knee yeah i blew my knee um before that i i won my first big air contest i won so much money at that contest i think it was 15 or maybe it was only 10 anyway i won a lot of money and we went to the bar it was frost gun invitational i just got invited it was crazy back in the days like there was just like a bunch of invitationals and just random contests now it's all world cups and all that yeah. i just got an email like hey alex belmar um you want to come do you want to come to our invitational contest lodging is free and um that's it i was like okay sure whatever and you end up winning and then i ended up winning and i remember alex ardal got screwed because he was doing switch 12s and 14s and he didn't even do good but that was so like before his time the way he was doing it and was it kind of like dub wobble it was kind of more like the pk way you know yeah. like more like not switch flippy. seven to switch cork five kind of yeah. not like switch cork nine to backflip anyways they were super nice and he got screwed but i ended up winning with a dub 12 dub jab and a switch dub 10 japan and partied super hard and then when we left the organizers just gave me money for the taxi taxi ride happens i don't remember anything about it wake up at the airport driver's super mad i remember woodsy was in the taxi too i don't remember the other guys and i couldn't figure out why the driver was so mad and then he asked me to pay him and I just give him all the money that I had, which was more than the fare. So he, he stopped complaining. And then we hop out of the taxi and I go to pick up my bag, my backpack, and it's full of puke. Because I got sick on the car ride and there was nowhere to puke. And I hate bothering people and I hate being a nuisance. So I just tried to hide it, open my my, my my bag with my macbook in it and everything no and puked right on my, my my macbook and and then it smelled horrible for the whole ride but i was asleep so i don't remember anything so was you were going to the airport yeah so and then i ended up flying with a backpack full of puke <laughs> and i was like i gotta bring back my macbook like there's a bunch of stuff on it i hope i can save it <laughs> So I brought it all the way back to Quebec and of course it was dead. There was the no smell. way you could save it. Yeah, the smell. I, I don't even remember, dude. I was oh so god. hungover, dude. So hungover. Oh my god. And um, yeah, so that was a funny story. Damn. So I did that. But I didn't care because I just won like 10 or 15. I don't remember how much it was. So I just bought a new computer. It was okay. There's a shot on YouTube of you at that contest talking about it. You do a switch dub. And your ski gets off while you're midair and you land on one foot. Yeah. Yeah, I got one up a lot now. I think Evan did a triple one ski yeah, landing. Yeah, this and, year. Yeah. But yeah, back in the days, I was uh, all the hype, dude. I don't know why. I guess my ski was clipped on weirdly because it just came off right on the takeoff. No resistance whatsoever. It just came off. Yeah. And that's a contest that didn't last long, right? No, I think they did like three three times they did it but then the prize money kept getting lower unfortunately so people kind of lost interest but i think i went the year after that i won the rail jam but not the big air hmm. didn't make as much money at all <laughs> so that was another good winter again doing better and better fourth at x games win the frost gun invitational mm -hmm. and then is it at water of rails that you blew your knee all the Quebec boys were going, and I remember you smashed your face big time. Yeah, 
I tried to hand drag on this like barrel thingy and I didn't drag my hand and I just did the cork five and landed super cork yeah. <laughs> straight on my dome. When we talk about like stuff that we that you guys did that was dangerous and yeah. that accidents can happen. Yeah. War of Rails was that thing like yeah. you smashed your face. I think you're right, same year. Like mm, possibly broke yeah. his hips. Right. Like something uh, gnarly. That's horrible though. Yeah. Like fucked up accident. Yeah. It, War of Rails was gnarly, dude. Like it's so crazy I was going over there with, like I don't think I had insurance or anything. That's fucked up. And now it's time for a first sponsor break. Tree Fort Lifestyles is a company based out of Oregon. They've been involved in the ski industry since their inception in 2011 when they made their first pair of suspenders for skiing. They produce some of the nicest accessories you can find out there for your adventure activities, whether you're going skiing, hiking, or traveling. I've worn their suspenders all winter, and I have to say I love them. They're stylish, and they're so comfortable you forget you have them on in the first place. Go check them out at treefortlifestyles.com and use code MERAN at checkout to get 15% off your order. Support companies that support skiing. Support Tree Fort Lifestyles. But yeah, like those setups were like amazing to ride, but like they could have been like park shoot setups where you get yeah. to like slowly ease into it. Not where it's like, all right, you guys get to warm up for two hours and then it's the jam and that's it. Yeah. It's like, holy crap, everyone's hucking, dude. And like, it's so big, it's gnarly as hell. And I remember there was this huge cannon with like the shortest landing and there was a fence right after. So like, that's where I learned cork blind eight tens out. And I remember landing and you straight up had to stop. Like, mm -hmm. but if you couldn't stop, you probably would have died and skied into the crowd. So yeah, gnarly, super gnarly. It's cool though. Until I, you smashed your face. Yeah, yeah, until I smashed my face. And then I remember I was all like paranoid about it. I was like, so I ended up going to the hospital and getting a bill. But it wasn't that big because nothing was broken or anything. It was just like x-rays yeah because it was my my eyes was super swollen and i'm always like oh yeah it's the end of the world i am dying take care of me <laughs> <laughs> so i was like yeah for sure i broke my skull i'm just so tough right now <laughs> ended up having basically nothing so yeah so, well when there's something on your face it always looks like yeah for sure and it sucks like i i remember like my eye was swollen and i couldn't see as well and i was all like paranoid yeah whatever. yeah I remember going with to Hood with ABM. Yeah. And he was trying a bunch of tricks, learning a bunch of tricks when he was before he got pro. Mm -hmm. And last day of the trip, he he lands something on his face. I don't remember what, but he gets his pole in his face and he has a, a big scratch under the eye. Like yeah, he kind yeah. of looks beaten. And then we drive straight up straight back to Quebec the day after. Mm -hmm. We pass through the customs, maybe like in the Chicago area or like you know, it's in the middle of the night. And yeah. there, there's ABM sleeping in the back. Oh, gosh. And, then and you're driving? I'm driving, and then I pull down the window, and there's just ABM sleeping with his eye cut off. Right, right. And the guy is like, son, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Take him away from me. <laughs> ABM wakes up, and he's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, that must have been sketchy and funny. Yeah. So you smash your face mm -hmm. in... um war of rails but you end up being good yeah how did the blown knee happen uh world champs in norway with team canada so um so that was like kind end of, of the March. first years of having world, world championships champs. i think it was the second one they had one in 2011 and now there was one in 2013 like and leading so, up to the first olympics yeah that's what it is there's always a uh, world champs every two years not on the olympic cycle you know mm -hmm. so yeah so then i and just actually i just ended up over there there was this huge jump it was a second jump you could do a pole jump or like a cannon rail and then jump jump i ended up trying that big jump switch and it was like sketchy and windy and jf full guineaed it the run before and i followed him into the guinea so we were both guineaing it which is like the stupidest thing you can do because <laughs> if he eats shit you're both oh, like if he overshoots everything i'm overshooting everything beside him like i wasn't following him in his tracks but so imagine like yeah two skiers from team canada just <laughs> blew up <laughs> would have been funny so anyway we guineaed it and then the run right after i'm like yeah i'm gonna do it switch because i gotta do a switch in my run And I just did a switch 180 and I've overshot everything. And as soon as I landed, I just let out the most high pitch. 
I'm dying scream, dude. Like it scarred like Evan and Noah. <laughs> they were on the knuckle and they just heard that and they were like, oh my God. Like, I don't know what happened, but he broke everything, like both femurs or some shit. If it was filmed, <laughs> it would be like in competition with my ankles are broken. Yeah, yeah, exactly, dude. It would be like, oh uh, yeah, I don't know. It was super high-pitched death scream. And so I knew I blew my knee. I knew something was super wrong. And I was just, I had so much speed and momentum because I went so big on such a big jump that I just kept tumbling after that on like a knee that was blown. And some people don't feel it and can keep on skiing me. I was just like dying. So, um, did you do the classic, like trying to get up and fall back on no, your face? No, no, no. I was down. I was staying down. I got, um, ski patrol got me out of there as soon as the ambulance showed up. They were like, um, you want morphine? I was like, sure, dude. <laughs> of course I do. I am hurt right now. And from that point on, it was chill. But um, yeah, once again, I thought I was dying. So that was the end of your season pretty. Yeah, that was actually kind of the end of the like come up of the whole like everything. It was my Everything's whole career was well. going up, going up, going up for two whole years. And then the Olympics were showing where it were going to happen. And it was a bummer because like I would have had like good potential for the Olympics, but everybody, when I blew my knee, like, like JF and Tobin kind of looked at each other and they're like, shit, there's no way that he can like be a hundred percent in like 11 months or 10 months. There's a couple people that got into that position yeah, right. for the Olympics. I think of Wallish and Kayaturski. Yeah, you're right. They both blew their knees mm -hmm. and they both were on a, marathon to try to get, get back. back in shape yeah wallish ended up not qualifying yeah kaya ended up going there and but like not yeah, didn't do not a hundred percent yeah yeah it seems like such a struggle not a struggle it's, it's not even a good term it's but like a chore it's a yeah a, a chore but a, like something so rough of like wallish was the best guy right, in the game right, at that point right, right. and he gets like bad luck yeah yeah, yeah. same for kaya yeah true Where it's like, yeah, it's brutal, hey, uh, sure. see you again in four years. But yeah, like four yeah, years yeah. is a long it's time. Brutal. You're right. Did you have in mind of like going to the Olympics? Yeah, I or thought I... were you like, okay, I'm not going to be able no, to? No, I thought I was going to go. I didn't know about the whole qualification and whatnot. I already had a couple of results because they, they take the results from the year prior. So I already had fourth at X Games. But I don't even know if it counted because back in the days, it was only the fist until Team Canada realized that like the big contest where everybody was at were like due tour and x games so i thought i was gonna i knew i was gonna be able to compete at the olympics if like my body was gonna be ready but i didn't know that i had to qualify for that and i didn't know that i wouldn't be able to do that at all like nobody so, explained like the not really i'm kind of i'm super flaky dude like all i cared about was going skiing and doing good and like i did not care at all for any like blah 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 you need to do better than this guy who's skiing moguls and all mm -hmm. that like i did not give a crap dude i just went skiing and if i'm in i'm in if i'm not i'm not mm -hmm. yeah yeah because i remember from the outside being bummed <laughs> knowing that we had so much talent in canada yeah and only abm went yeah yeah it was for sure it was huge bummer for my part like and i was like on Were a roll you in shape at, by that time yeah by that time i was i didn't do do tour in december of that coming year but like when the um when the olympics happened i had just learned switch dub 14s on my own at keystone just because i was hungry for it and emil was there actually um emil bergeron And so I had just learned Switch 14s and, you know, I was still hungry. I was strong and I was like, I wanted it, but I, I couldn't do it at the Olympics. But I, I so wish that I would have gotten the opportunity, dude, because I would have learned to triple on the spot. And like, I don't know, I felt hungry in those days and I wasn't scared of anything. It's a bummer. Did you watch the competition? Of course I did. What were your thoughts seeing the course? I mean, <laughs> I was crying inside. It dude. looked it was like the so most, perfect. Yeah, the most perfect course ever. Yeah, exactly. Like you actually go over there and learn a triple on the spot. Like easy, dude. Like it was so perfect. Yeah. Joss's winning run. He he. His final jump is a switch triple. Mm -hmm. 
and it looks like the slowest triple ever like yeah. just chilling in the air yeah yeah for sure it was i don't think they ever built like a slope course like that one like they've they had huge rails in pyeongchang but normal that, jumps that was dope because people were scared or at least i was that since it it's fist and the olympics and all that stuff that maybe they would butcher it a bit like do right. a shitty slope course but yeah it was like the dopest ever yeah i know they got it they figured it out like and, and the weather was so good too yeah so like helped. kind of springtime yeah yeah exactly like henrik doing a butter triple like on a yeah in the middle oh of the yeah, course. yeah no it was on the first jump i yeah. think and then a switch right dub and then a, i think it was nose butt triple nose butt triple switch dub switch right dub switch yeah i think that's up, what, yeah, and he yeah. ended up with switch right and yeah kind that's of what it was it. yeah you're right crazy contest yeah and now it's time for a second sponsor break planks is a british outerwear brand founded in the french alps yeah you can ski in the uk but you probably wouldn't but these guys are still passionate about skiing and as someone from quebec i definitely relate to that they don't just make high quality good looking gear that's affordable they care about the free ski culture too running grassroots events and sporting skiers that are some of my favorites like woodsy lupe haggerty and the real skiffy crew make sure to check them out at planksclothing.com support companies that support skiing support planks clothing so 2014 was kind of a mellow year for you getting back into it yeah but i still went to europe and i did like my first sfr tour and i did the vars tournament which was like game of skate and all that so i was like doing stuff still but it was all so under the radar compared to the olympics that you would think i was basically up to nothing 2015 that was i think that was my best year you get your you finally get your podium at x games yeah exactly i got third about time yeah i was hyped and actually like we were saying about time but i really only did two other x games before so like but it still felt like an eternity because yeah. you're waiting an entire year to get back to it but when it's young people that are hungry like you were yeah yeah and that are talented like you were yeah. sometimes it comes quick like for gepper when he came in it was yeah, quick and for same sure. for bobby brown and when you come in even though you're a rookie like same thing last year colby stevenson mm -hmm. it was the first year and you yeah, won yeah you're right like, you're right yeah it happens on the first years you're right 2015 was like the year that i felt the most on top of it and like i had the most potential for podiums because everyone was kind of exhausted because it was a, the olympics the year prior to that mm -hmm. i was super hungry because i didn't get to compete in them And I had learned switch 12s and 14s in Keystone. Yeah. And people were doing those, but not that often. So I could do three 12s in every run. And so I always had jumps that were like a little above average. And then I could do my rails and so like right aim for 12, the podium all the time. Right up 12, switched up 12, and then left up 12. Yeah, that like was that. usually what it was. I usually ended up ended with the left 12, but yeah. What made you do like the right before the left? Um, it was just because I could look over my shoulders. I was trying to find a, the reason, but that's what it is. It's because when I spin right 12, I land looking over my left shoulder already. Mm -hmm. So going for a switch left 12, I'm already looking at the jump. I'm already going into it with the vision and all that. It makes for a less spinny run. I find in video and like looking at it looks more in control mm -hmm. and your head ends up spinning 360 degrees less. So, so that run switch tails to pretzel to switch right tails to switch right tails to I sorry. Learned, I, in qualities, I didn't do it. I learned it for finals switch left four on to a wall ride kind of. Yeah. And then crazy trick four on disaster pretzel four stomped. Yeah. That was my thing, dude. That was, I was banking everything on that. Yeah. So you see, I land, I'm already looking over the shoulder. Mm. That's why I was doing it that way. Right up 12, to switched up 12, stomped. Speed was a little sketchy, I guess. Yeah, it I, looks I managed, like though, but... On your last jump, you're kind of Oof. almost not getting it. Damn, almost didn't get a medal right there. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. How is it for you dealing with competitions? Because you're talking about flat light and speed issues. Um, in those days, I didn't mind at all. Because I, 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 I was on top of my tricks, and I knew that I could get them and i was actually hyped when it was shitty weather because i was on top of my tricks and i feel felt like i could do them in any condition mm. whereas if it was super bluebird or something you might have some guy throwing a triple and that was not an option for me and your strength is your rail tricks yeah those and, go anyways yeah exactly so yeah i didn't really mind the weather at that point but 
it definitely started to bother me a couple years later, for sure. I kind of hated putting myself in danger at that point. For our generation, and X Games is the dream. Um, yeah, I agree. You're still young at that point. You get your X Games medal. Um, I was hyped, dude. And then, like, I didn't even know, but there's this whole press conference after you get a medal, like, or you're talking and the media is, like, asking you questions. Well, they didn't ask me any questions, really, because Nick just got three beat. Mm. So I was kind of just, like, the guy who got third. Who cares? But I was so hyped, dude. Just there was a mic in front of me, and I was standing there, and a couple of people asked me something. And I was like, damn, dude, I'm a superstar. <laughs> I was also scared it was all downhill from here because, like, that was my dream when i was a kid like of course it was a gold medal when i was a kid but like still getting an x games medal was like what i wanted and i just got it at that point and i was like shit what if it's all downhill from here what if i can never get as good as i just did this year like what if next year i'm not as good why because i'm like that <laughs> but like, you weren't uh, up until that point it was uh, I, were you yeah i guess like i've always been a little like Like, I, I've always been the type of guy who's, like, in practice, I would never do my run because I was like, what if I get my run three times in practice? I'm bound to fuck up. Nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. I already got it three times out of three. I'm going to get it 75% of the time, so I'll screw up the fourth time. And if that's my run, then I screwed my run up. So I barely ever did my runs in practice because I didn't want to, like, push my luck. So you didn't have in mind the other side of saying like, I want to practice them just to be sure I'm on point when my run comes? Well, yeah, yeah. But I also saw the possibility of maybe not being able to get back to that. Like that makes everybody, me think everybody gets a high point in their life. Like, mm -hmm. and you don't necessarily know when you're there until you're past that point and it's all, and it's going down. And like, I was acknowledging that maybe that was the high point yeah maybe. that's like the memes uh sometimes in your youth you didn't know you were going to to play in the playground for the last time and it, it was yeah. the last time yeah exactly or like you wish you, the good old day you wish you know you're living the good old days before they become the good old days mm -hmm. you know yeah so yeah yeah what you're telling me reminds me of like you know in cartoons you see uh the little angel on your shoulder and the devil mm -hmm. and talking the good side for and the sure. bad side Yeah, and it seems like the the devil was winning because there's the good side of saying like, yeah, he's "Hey, uh, he's I'm going to practice and I'm going to get it good," and then the devil saying, "No, no, you're going to." What's screw the point? Up. Yeah, <laughs> what's the point? But yeah, no, for sure, uh, little Lucifer is loud as hell. So 2015, you get your X Games medal. Mm -hmm. At that point, you're not filming with any company. You're just like yeah. focusing on comp competitions. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was such a good gig with Team Canada, like hey dude we'll pay you we'll pay every trip you just got to go ski the best parks and do your run i was like okay whatever i'm not gonna go shovel stairs like this is yeah. way too much fun i'm just hanging out with the boys it's, it's a hard deal to say no to yeah for sure exactly and even like other sponsors are hyped that you're getting tv time and all that so i was like sure i'll do that fine mm -hmm. with me dude i also got there was um aaron style right after that i got second to that And so Aaron style, which is like the big air competition. Yeah. Sean White's big air thing. Yeah. Jig. They did it for skiing that year and got, flo got an email. Hey, Mr. Belmar, do you want to come to our contest? Everything's paid for. You just got to get your flight and we'll take care of the rest. And so flew to not LAX, some other airport in Los Angeles or not Los Angeles in California. And, um, best week dude like it was warm outside we were walking around in shorts and all that and going skiing and there's this huge jump it's a festival there's like um kendrick lamar who's singing and all that so it was you felt like a superstar dude and we were living in like sick hotel that was all paid for it was nice so and it was a city big air yeah it was a city big air exactly How it was, was my it? first scaffolding jump actually was it sketchy no like it was as fine. someone who can be like thinking of the bad outcomes yeah no i hit it switch and i didn't find it sketchy i thought i think the sketchiest part is being up top and looking down and thinking like how is this thing not gonna topple over like it can't be that solid but i guess it is i'm sure some engineer signed off the paperwork 
let's hope so yeah <laughs> so yeah and then the finals got canceled for that contest so i ended up taking the results from quali and i ended up doing a switch dub 12 dub jab and a switch dub 14 dub jab those were my two jumps it's so whack when you think well, of that well yeah it's whack as hell it's like the same trick plus a 180 and now it's time for another sponsor break access board shop is a ski and snowboard shop based out of saint sauveur quebec canada they've been in business since 2002 and have supported skiing since day one from sponsoring numerous athletes to putting on competitions to helping out movie productions they've done it all Axis is the core board shop and they've got everything that you might need this season. Check them out at axisboutique.com or go check out their shop in Saint Sauveur. Support companies that support skiing. Support Axis board shop. You're not the only one to have no, done I know, that. I know, I know, but like I thought it was whack, but I was hyped because like prize money was crazy. Bobby Brown, I think, you know, his rookie year in Big Air, he did switch dub Misty 12 and switch dub yeah. Misty 14. Yeah, you're right. It's like, yeah, that was it in those days. You're right. Reggae Lee this year. Dub 18, well, no. Trip, yeah, but they didn't it, count. No? Oh, no, because his they, trip revert yeah, was more points. Yeah, now it's like one forward and one switch or one right and one left. No. In X Games, they did that. Oh, really? They, they didn't? And they reverted back. Oh, no way. Yeah. Anyways, I didn't know that. Yeah, I remember the year they did uh, a couple of years ago, like maybe three years ago, they were doing that at X Games, mm -hmm. left side and right side. And I remember Enric calling them out in the interview. Oh, like yeah, At the yeah. bottom of the course, the yeah, girl you're right. <laughs> asks him about something, and he just <laughs> he ignores the question, and he's like, yeah, it would be dope to go back to the other format. Yeah, I got something to say. <laughs> and plus, he's like, usually Enric is like, just chill and like yeah yeah and when yeah. He, he says something like that you're like okay okay we'll listen duly noted <laughs> don't say that again we'll listen <laughs> so yeah great year yeah super good year and there i also got the third or second at sfr anyway which um, were slope style comps yeah, which in was, france yeah slope style comps in france exactly i got third because the year before i got fourth so yeah i got third which was another podium and then I hustled because I got a good result at that big air contest. I hustled and went to two more or three more big air contests so I could get a good result for the AFB standings. Because that used to be pretty big, like winning the overall AFB. Mm -hmm. And I was going to do super good for slope. I wanted to do good for big air. And um, I also ended up going to JOI that year. Bought like last second $2,000 plane ticket because I did this like online um entry thingamajig like send a video and hope you can win and i ended up getting invited because of that was it like a like a view contest yeah or? kind of entry like for anybody could anybody could enter and i ended up doing that and i went to hang out at joi with the boys well it's kind of surprising that you had to do that considering you were in the comp game you you had some results everywhere. yeah but i didn't have big air results at all hmm. all all every comp i did was slope and so i was kind of a big air nobody mm -hmm. so that's how i so first time at joi um yeah i think that was the first time 24 no 2014 was the first time the year before that we okay. skipped we skipped an event that's where i did my first triple 16 japan dude nobody I wish nobody I... filmed it one guy said he filmed it said you want to see your shot i was like yeah show me and then he said oh wait oh shit sorry i can't find it i didn't film it i was so bummed then I did it again in the contest and I thought I was going to 16 because I did it to 16 in practice. So I thought I was going to 16 and I thought I was, I had to do this like little shifty 90 degrees to land perfect at 16, but I got lost and I would have landed perfect at 14, but I shifted my skis and just ended up landing sideways and hitting my dome super hard and like getting rocked. So was that 2014 or 15? End of 2014. Okay. Yeah. And that was kind of a turning point a bit where I was so scared. I actually learned um, the triple 16 at Frost Gun, but I never landed it. And then I landed it for the first time at JOI. But that was a turning point for me where like I thought something and that wasn't reality. I thought I was going to 16. I thought I had to do a 90 degrees with my skis. It was obvious for me that that was what was happening. 
but that wasn't the reality of it. And then I started doubting myself a bit in my skiing where like, you remember that one time when you thought this was happening and you had to do that to, to, to do good. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it was. So uh, that was, and I also hit my head super hard, which always sucks. Yeah. So, yeah. I remember talking to JF Wool about that also. If, like you were trying to triples to stay up with on par with the game. And he had the same problems going into Sochi of like right side spins were right side spins were his like weakness. Yeah. And he did a lot of water ramps, I think, to try right doubles. Yeah. And like he was comfortable. And as soon as he got like back on skis, he tried it and like got wrecked. Yeah. Yeah. And then after that, that's when he was like, okay, I'm, I'm done with I'm slope done with style. This. Yeah. And you went on to like make a hole again. Made, and made on to kill it. Yeah, street. exactly. Yeah. So you yeah. got wrecked at, at JY 2014. Had a good year 2015. So is that where you, you kind of like started to doubt yourself? Because you said... A little bit. You still won bronze the, the yeah. year after that. Yeah, but, but I that, didn't have to do a triple. Exactly. Yeah. So that's why you were you were glad that it was flat light. Yeah, exactly. You were like, okay, I'm from, not going to have to risk yeah. it. And same for Aaron Style Big Air. Like, shit, there's no finals. That's a bummer. <laughs> like everybody's like planning to just huck it in finals. Well, turns out you can't. And turns out my quality jumps, which were going to be my finals jump also, are good enough for a podium in these circumstances. So yeah, I was stoked. Whenever the sh weather was shitty, I was hyped. There's a lot of people that, especially kids these days, that learn dubs or triples by rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. They try it again and again and again. What was your process of learning triples? Like, I guess you weren't that type of guy of like trying it a hundred times on the water ramps or something um, like that. I messed with the water ramps a bit and I never liked them. So I didn't really want to want to spend all my time and energy on that. Um, when I did it at Frost Gun, it was like, I knew I could do it. Dub 10 to cork five, easy peasy. You got it. Did that, landed on my feet, but washed out, whatever. Did that at JOI, landed the first one because the jump was so big. I was like, okay, I got this, dude. It's exactly what I thought it would be like. And then ate shit at JOI. And then from that point on, it's like, oh, shit, they're not what I thought they were going to be. And so I got scared from them, and I kind of, like, didn't want to practice them at all. Like, I didn't want to learn them, neither on water ramps, neither on an airbag, on anything. I just felt like... I didn't want to put myself in that situation where like I'm heading towards the jump and I have to do a trick that I, I'm scared of doing. And question for you. To me, it seems like a smoother dub would be switch trip 12. A smoother like, triple? Yeah, like switch dub nine to another court three. Yeah. Like kind of Sammy, a lot of guys, I think their first triple is that. Yeah, like, I mean, to the me, first quad was that. Yeah. To me, the first, like a triple 16 looks way more intense than a switch trip 12. Yeah, but I had done a whole lot more dub 10s because it was part of my run most of the times. And like at the end of the day, it's like it was just a dub 10, which I had done a million times to a cork five or mm -hmm. like so. It, and then I could have a stronger takeoff too because I was going forward and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Whereas switch, you'd like, I don't know. It was, and I also I knew that I wouldn't like my switch triple because my switch dumb nines were flippy, and I didn't want to be that guy doing a switch triple that's like switch 180 backflip backflip backflip. I didn't want to be that guy. So But when I, I see your, maybe I think it's in your 2013 X Games run, yeah. you do a switch dub 10 jab. Yeah, man, that in trip, I think that would look good. Yeah, but I that's think not Gus a... did some like that switch trip. Jab. He did, yeah, he did a switch trip 14, kind of like a switch dub 10 yeah. would look, but to 14. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I, I, I did switch triples later on, and th that's what they were. They were switch 180, side flip, side flip, side flip, land forward, or switch 180, side flip, side flip, okay, so you land did to 14. Yeah, I did them at X Games, big air practice. I was doing slow, but I was an alternate for big air, so I could snake. And I learned it because I was like, oh, I got to do this in my slope run. Never did it. The weather was shitty. But never had the <laughs> chance after that to do that? Um, never seized the chance, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. um, no, I guess I did have the chance once in 2017, but didn't do it. Mm. And so 
yeah, I just figured that I had to do a switch triple and I was like, this is the best jump I'm going to get. So I'm going to try it. And I did, I think I did three of them. I did two to 12 and one to 14. So what was All your process? All of them felt horrible. Did you do like a bunch of switched up nines to ease it? Yeah, exactly. You do a bunch of switched up nines, make sure you pop as hard as you can and you're patient because you just don't want to like rush it and have no amplitude and end up hitting the knuckle and dying. Mm -hmm. So I did a bunch of switched up nines and JF was like, yeah, man, you're good. <laughs> you got it. So <laughs> no, I was like, okay, rest in peace. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> But what what's that? Because I don't really know JF Kissel. Yeah. Is it because he's not a he's not someone who talks a lot? Well, no, no, no. It's just like, well, what else is he gonna say? Like, yeah, I know what I got to do. Like the and I know the rotation is fine. It's just I got to do it well, the way that it has to be done. But, but like, does it change something when he tells you you're good? <laughs> Not at all, dude. <laughs> it just tells me like, okay, you've done enough switched up nines. Like it's not going to change anything. Yeah, okay. Just do it. <laughs> okay. In that sense, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Fuck dribbles. I, I didn't like them. And now it's time for another sponsor break. Jace Keys is a company based out of Burlington, Vermont. Their business model of making limited edition graphics keys that are sold online directly to consumer is super dope. As a fan of original graphics, I love it. They put a lot of effort into making great skis, but also in making them look super good. I finally had the chance to try out my vacation skis this spring and I gotta say I love them. They were so playful that after shooting a jump I had to go in front of the lens and hit it myself. Knowing how much time and effort Jason Leventhal and his team put into each ski they produce, I'm really looking forward to their upcoming releases. Support companies that support skiing. Support J skis. You've had a big crash at JOI. Mm -hmm. you're off on triples you're, it's not your thing yeah you're not into them yeah you still do it and you stomp it yeah but they were ugly and they were out of control and no not popped and yeah well because when you say you're ugly i'm like well how can you know it was flippy i have the shots oh no actually i dropped my computer <laughs> in my lap in my bathtub <laughs> but so i did have the, the shot story there's the bathtub <laughs> yeah and yeah. then there's another story about the computer Um, I'll get back to it later. Just remind me. So, but yeah, so I, I just didn't like my takeoffs were all panicky and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And later on, I tried them again at Dubai and I never committed to it. Was it because there was something wrong with how you did them or was it really like the mental game affecting how you did them? A bit of both. Like I didn't have a good pop. My instant, my survival instinct of like spin as fast as you can because you need to get three flips around was overtaking the like be patient with it pop Let it, it as hard. yeah like i was seeing it the wrong way like i knew i had to not do it that way but i couldn't convince my body to to do it the right way because mm -hmm. it's scarier if you're not confident yeah go ahead with the laptop story. oh yeah i'm curious so we had this one trip we went to windells in the summer with team canada and um i i'm sitting on this bench at the airport i think JF or Tobin went to pick up the car, the rental car, and we're sitting on this bench. And then he shows up. I get up, put my ski bag in the, in the van, and drive to Windells. And then I get to Windells, and we unload the car. And then I get inside, and I'm about to go hang out on my computer. <laughs> and I'm like, shit, I don't have my backpack, guys. And, <laughs> and then I left it at the airport, called them. They didn't have it for some reason. That was super weird. I didn't have it. And then I go buy a new computer like three weeks later, get back home. And then I get called again, like two months or so later. And they tell me that they have my backpack and like the airport calls me and tells me they have my backpack. And I ask them if everything's in it. And they're like, yeah, there's the MacBook and all that and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no way. Okay. That's sick. And then I ask them, I asked them to ship it in Breckenridge because we're going there for Dutor. And that year we went on a trip to New Zealand and I bought this coffee mug in New Zealand as a souvenir. And that coffee mug was in that backpack. And now that backpack's at Dutor. And I get my backpack. I get my coffee mug. I get my laptop. I'm like, oh yeah, it's sick. And now I have two MacBooks. That's sick drink coffee in my coffee mug for the whole week leave shit i forgot my coffee mug my souvenir in the cabinets at dutor 
a whole year later, we get the exact same condo and there's my coffee mug from New Zealand. And then I picked it back up and brought it back home. <laughs> so yeah, funny how everything found its way back. Okay, I thought it was going to end up with another computer crashed. No, no, I didn't break that one. I just had two laptops. So I sold one to my brother for like a hundred bucks because he was at school and he, he could use it and I didn't need to. So good guy. Alex. Yeah, I gave him a little gift. As you were saying, the competition scene was getting more intense and more intense with triples and everything. Mm -hmm. And it was not your cup of tea. Not really. I mean, I wanted to be able to do it, but I was too scared to yeah. go into the triple. What was the, the setup with Team Canada? Did they have like a, like, you know, sports psychologist that you could talk to about those um, stuff? Like, Yeah, I did. That was later on though, but I did start seeing a sports psychologist like before the Olympics and all that. But like, I basically went there for no reason because like there was no way that that guy was going to convince me that, and that wasn't his goal either mm -hmm. to convince me that I'm going to be fine if I try a triple. Mm -hmm. But there was no way that he was going to, whatever he was going to say that I was going to be like, oh yeah, you're right. I'm going to do a triple because. Well, what was the, the sessions like? Oh, there are a bunch of things. Like I was telling him about my childhood and uh, a bunch of things, like just personal stuff. So and it I guess wasn't he was only sports. It was like broader than. It was sports. broader, yeah, for sure. And it was fun. Like I was just talking to him about a bunch of things, and it was fun. I guess he jotted down whenever the hell he jotted down, and mm -hmm. but like right after the Olympics, I stopped seeing him, and it was fine. Like, mm -hmm. what were your goals after 2015? You get your medal at X Games, then it kind of goes a bit downhill mentally, I guess. Yeah, yeah. With the triples and everything, mm -hmm. but still, you're on. You've got sponsors. You're on Team yeah, Canada, yeah, and ev for sure. everything's going well. Yeah, I actually so, just just picked up North Face. So, what were your goals? So at that point, I knew that I could still do good in contest if triples weren't a thing. Mm -hmm. So I was obviously still going to stick around with Team Canada. Cool life travel the world just do a run it's, so i did that and then but i could definitely feel that like you know let's say whenever conditions were good i wasn't a podium contender not the way that i was maybe in like 2013 and 2015 mm -hmm. so um but i still kept doing all the contests and i actually won my first world cup on in that year yeah it came out of nowhere but It Olympic happened. test event. Yeah, exactly. You go to Korea to like kind of test out, do like kind of yeah, a... basically live out the Olympics two years in advance. Usually they do it one year in advance. Is it kind of also for the, the organizers like to prepare yeah. things, like do a test run? Yeah, it's for everybody, honestly. Mostly the organizers, more than the skiers, I'd mm -hmm. say. Like they just check out if the slope is has good um, inclination or um, steepness, whatever. Yeah. But yeah, basically that's all they do. So there's the best skiers in the world there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like the Olympics, but it's a World Cup. So there's a bunch of skiers instead of just like 32. So you go there and you win. Yeah, it was crazy, dude. I couldn't believe it. Honestly, that was insane. Like it was qualies, mess up my first run, stomp my second run, actually whiffed a grab, but nobody saw it. I was hyped. Get a super good score. Finals come up mess up the first run and at that point i was kind of in a shit place mentally so i was like i already did so good i already made it to finals i'm fine i could be last and it's okay dude like whatever so was it kind of a, a goal making like it to for you was like yeah in comps it's make finals at that point that's kind of what it was it was like definitely one step at a time like whereas in 2013 and 2015 my goal was to really like get on the podium mm -hmm. whereas Now it was just like one step at a time. Make finals first and then you'll check it out. Was it like because you knew that the level was so intense? Yeah, exactly. And also there's so many skiers and so many guys were putting out sick runs. Like how do you compare compare some guy who does like switch to back to right to front to switch? Like, you know, mm -hmm, like yeah. a bunch of runs could be like equivalent, but mm -hmm. which one's better? Like, who yeah, knows? and I feel like it's that it's more than ever gamble. today. Yeah, for sure. When It's a bit of a gamble. It used to be that like you see someone seventh and mm -hmm. there was a difference between yeah. him and the podium. And nowadays, yeah. yeah, I think it's mostly wobbles. Like someone messes up a jump a bit, mm -hmm. but 
the runs are in the top 10, they're all crazy. Yeah, I agree. Well, let's check okay, out that's the your, run. your winning run from the Olympic test event. Yeah. The course looks look kind of funky. It was Sw- nice, though. Switch to back four. It was pretty big. It was kind of icy at that point, though. It was the morning. Kind of a hip to right two on disaster. Then a big ass tube. Four on. Yeah, to that straight. came out of nowhere. To a back two on a flat rail to drop. Then right twelve. Yeah, same same jump run. Right dub twelve. Switch dub twelve yeah. and left dub twelve. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I like twelve on that. I n- barely ever did it with safety, so it felt good. But I didn't think I was gonna get first at all. I knew it was like maybe podium, but I didn't think I was going to be first with that run. I was super surprised and hyped. It was like there was Henrik and Jossie on the podium. I was like, there's no way I'm going to be Henrik. Like, how's that going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> and then I shit you not, 90 something shows up and wow. Because, <laughs> yeah, you're, you said you kind of idolized Phil when you were younger. And when you were a bit older, like going on a trip with Wallish, you were like, oh my mm-hmm. God, I'm with Wallish. Yeah. Was in like, you you knew Henrik and you were probably yeah, friends yeah, with him. Yeah, sure. But still, was there a thing of like, yeah, I'm on the podium with Henrik? Well, yeah, dude, definitely. And even Jossie too. Like, I think those guys are so stylish and so like, they've been there forever. And like, I remember Henrik was doing this switch like 16s in New Zealand yeah. or something like that was so long ago and so cool. And then Jossie was the doing G-suit. due tour like way before I was doing due tour. Like, so it was crazy to be on the podium with those guys and to be like higher up on the podium than those guys was mm-hmm. also pretty dope too. And now it's time for another sponsor break. Dick Hans is a family owned restaurant chain with 12 locations in the Montreal region. And I'm really stoked to have them as a sponsor. If you've never been, you have got to try it out. They're one of a kind hamburgers. have been favorites of mine since I was a kid. They've started selling products like their legendary sauce and they have a lot more coming out soon, so be on the lookout for that. Support companies that support skiing, support Dickens restaurants. That was really big leading up to the 2018 Olympics. Uh, Yeah, yeah. I like saved the day for Team Canada right there. It was like... It was like the most clutch thing I could ever do, dude. Fuck up my first run, fuck up my second run, boom, third run shows up win the contest is like like for everybody who's funding team canada it's like hey give us money Mm because our athlete just won the olympics two years in advance Mm -hmm. keep on funding us get us training and we're gonna win the olympics in two years like Mm -hmm. that's basically what they say what they sell Mm -hmm. so i it was like the most clutch thing i could possibly do i was hyped so landing it on your third run was there something for you mentally of like um, having I, stress off your shoulder? Saying I, like, w- I wasn't even nervous for the finals. Like I told you, mm. I made finals. At that point, I knew that skiing good weather, I wasn't a podium contender. I guess for some reason I was mm-hmm. at that contest because nobody did triples. Mm-hmm. But like I made finals and I was like, screw it. I'm hyped. Mm-hmm. Fuck it. Do my first run and screw up the four on. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> what do I care? Do the second run, screw up the four-on again. Fuck. <laughs> Whatever. The uh, four-on. Yeah. Yeah, because cause it was so short yeah. that I had to go slow, but I had to pop high to get the four mm. around and not catch my tips. And you had to like land right on it to fall into the tranny perfectly. The two runs before that, I just landed right in the middle of the rail and slid to the end, mm. and then I couldn't hit the flat bar. Mm. So that was the tricky thing about it okay so yeah no but i wasn't nervous at all you telling me that you had a hard time with a four on i'm like i know crazy i just slid to the end of the rail when i shouldn't yeah well that's the thing about you like i'm not going off early yeah what's that (laughs) no but yeah so that was cool 2016 2017 you get a couple podiums um here and there and sfr stuff like yeah exactly i got 2016 i won that I think that was my only podium that year. I think. I'm not sure. And then 2017, I got third at SFR because the weather was horrible and they canceled finals. Actually, qualies was okay, but everybody was like not sending it. Mm -hmm. And then they canceled finals and I was third. So, hell yeah, buddy. (laughs) (laughs) After 
bunch of due tours, bunch of X Games, big air comps, missing out on Sochi. Yeah. You with those podiums that you got the years prior, you you're qualified for Pyeongchang. Yeah, exactly. I qualified with uh, third place at SFR and then two top tens that I managed to get. I don't remember where. Mm -hmm. And it's a really different Team Canada than in Sochi, whereas in Sochi there was ABM alone. Yeah. And in Pyeongchang, it was a heavy crew. Yeah, it was all the boys. Evan, <laughs> Evan Teal, ABM, yourself. Yeah. Yeah, I think except for you, the other three all made finals. Is it possible exactly and they they all had crazy runs. yeah yeah definitely how was the 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 olympic experience like let's start off like when did you find out and how, how was it when you found out like that you were actually going um I, the way that i found out actually was i got a phone i had totally forgotten that but now that you're talking about it we had a world cup it was the last so basically 2018 went um world cup in snowmass i had learned dub bios i was skiing super good in snowmass i was in a good place mentally because you couldn't do triples and so i do i make it to finals i'm feeling good and i'm, I'm like in finals i'm going to one up my game instead of a dub 10 i'm going to do a dub bio 10 and dub so bio 10 dub misty dub bio dub whatever dub forward mm -hmm. um and so what grab safety Okay. And so I do it in practice and I commit to it and they're fine and I stomp them. I'm hyped. And then in my contest run, freaking like a retard dude, like brain fart. I'm just like setting it. I set it and in the air, I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> and I just open up. But like opening up on a dub cork where you're setting backwards is like if you over rotate to your back, it's going to hurt and you have like momentum that's going to whip whatever. Mm -hmm. But if you over rotate a dub bio, mm -hmm. you're like flipping into the landing. It's like, and so I did that and I opened up and I landed flat on my back, dude. Like it was like there was a trampoline and I was in a training camp or something. Oh. It was so whack. And so I micro fractured my back. One of my vertebrae, I think it was my T4 vertebrae mm. went to the hospital, huge bill. So annoying. And, dealt with that and then there was another world cup in um in a mammoth that i couldn't ski because i was hurt um mm, and, and did you end up pulling out of x games due to that yeah and then my vertebrae was still hurting for the x games and i was like i'm not gonna go and get messed up like i'm gonna hopefully do the olympics and feel 100 percent. but basically i got invited right after mammoth when there was no more qualifying events my phone just rang and we were in, in um reno at a hotel just before our flight and my phone rings and it's some um journalist from quebec who's like monsieur benmar félicitations vous êtes qualifié <laughs> and i'm like what oh really no way cool and i was like she just told me i got qual i got i qualified myself for the olympics i made the team and so that's how i officially heard the news that was the way that's how it went party time in the hotel yeah not really actually <laughs> but i think we gambled a bit but we didn't i didn't puke on my computer that time <laughs> <laughs> but what was your reaction was it like relief or um I'm, yeah a little bit but were you I, expecting it yeah the coaches were like uh we think you're good like 98 percent think you're good so you should be good so i was stoked to have it confirmed but i wasn't surprised either mm -hmm. how far ahead did you learn it learn oh um, that you were in like because for team usa probably guys three weeks three weeks two, ahead two or three yeah so it's it's uh like a, it's last second yeah yeah you're it's you're like, fighting for your spot till the very last minute it's draining mentally it must be yeah for, well for me it wasn't because i got hurt but i before i got hurt i was still fighting for it so yeah it is Cause as soon as you get your call it's like hey hop on the plane come see us yeah basically yeah it's like pack your bags because you're leaving in two weeks mm -hmm how was the olympic experience it was nice um it was a little weird too felt kind of like summer camp <laughs> like there's this huge cafeteria and there's a bunch of food and you just go there with your friends and you get your food and then you sit at the table and you put your tray over there because that where the tray that's where like, the uh, trays go do people sit by country 
mostly yeah they do sometimes people like mix but socialize a bit yeah but mostly it was countries mick kingsbury told me about the olympics mm -hmm. and he was telling me that um it was cool for him as a big hockey fan mm -hmm. to see the team canada boys yeah and like at some point he he came across Sidney crosby right and he was right. like hey man can i get a photo yeah 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 and that's nice he long story short he didn't get that photo that time oh that's but, not nice <laughs> <laughs> well he ended up he asked crosby crosby said yes but he they kind of lost lost each other like yeah. he didn't find him and at the end of the games he was waiting to go at the closing ceremony mm -hmm. and team canada comes in last second because they just won the tournament and crosby's beside him and he's like hey You still want your picture? Oh, and nice. He was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> so sick. like he walked at the closing ceremony with like his hockey idol. Right, right. Was there some stuff of like of that with you of like a uh, coming across Sean White or I don't know like some hockey guys or? No, not. Um, did I see anyone that phased me? Because um, like the biggest stars, let's say in the snow snow Olympics or yeah, Winter Olympics, snow, is like yeah. the hockey guys, I guess. Yeah, I guess you're right, but. They live, um, there's like the, uh, the, the ski village and there's like the ice rink village kind of. Mm. So like all the people that need a mountain to do their sport, like bobsled and mm -hmm. skiing and all those guys are in the ski town and all the other guys who need the ring, like, um, ice rink, curling, whatnot are all down at the bottom. So I didn't really see all those guys that much, really. The competition. It was also a really cool setup. Like we talked that Sochi was really dope. What was your, what were your thoughts on the um, Pyeongchang the, course? I thought the rails were sick, dude. They like, were huge. I think the rails should be like that more often. It might not suit everybody, but it's fun when you can like do tricks on and off and like you feel like it made like every trick be gnarly, mm -hmm. which can bum people out i guess but it also made it like that much harder to well, do the tricks you normally mm -hmm. do and you guys are at such a high level that it allows you to do them yeah you're right you're sometimes right. in slope style course if it's a small flat rail or a down rail it's like you'll do the same tricks that you were doing 10 years ago because mm -hmm. you can't that's do all big, you can do you're yeah. right like yeah. i remember you did a switch tails four on to switch yeah evan did a four on back swap two out yeah and that's like that big rail allowed you to yeah, do that. Yeah, you're right, you're right, actually. And so, yeah, the rails were honestly top-notch. There was nothing to, nothing that was bad about them at all. Like, it was sick. Um, the jumps were all right. I kind of hated jumps at that point. I had just, I was scared of triples. I just tried to dub bio, and I didn't commit to it, so mm -hmm. I hurt my back. So every jump was like, fuck this, dude. I hated them. Trying to survive. Yeah, basically just trying to get to the bottom. And so that was a bummer, but I knew that I wouldn't do good at the Olympics because at that point, I didn't even care. I made it to the Olympics and I was like, I'm not doing a triple and eating shit mm -hmm. and getting hurt forever or whatnot mm -hmm. here. I'm not doing a dub bio. I might do it if I feel it, but I'm not. it's not a goal of mine to do mm -hmm. that. So I just showed up and I was like, I'm doing my jump run that I've always been doing. I'm doing the sickest rails that I can do. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens, happens. Yeah. yeah. And you didn't get a particularly good score. No. But I remember watching it live and the judging seemed off. Like there, it seemed like they were the first guys to go ahead mm -hmm. were got a really low score kind yeah. of to keep, to give them space for further down. Yeah. But then it ended up that I don't know. Like, We were forgotten. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you I've got a, a 70. Let's say. I don't yeah. know what you got. But let's say you got a 70. I think if you went like 20 riders further, you maybe got, would have gotten a 78. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you're right too. I mean, I never even looked at the contest again after. Mm -hmm. So I can't really say. But in the moment, that's what it felt like. I felt like my run was pretty good and mech Ray's run was pretty good we did mm -hmm. both the runs one after the other yeah. and we got a pretty low score and then looking at the other runs afterwards i was comparing them always to me mm -hmm. and i always felt like the score was higher which was a bummer but like yeah because a, a lot of runs didn't have the 
technicality that you had on your rails. Yeah. I think they're like in the middle of the course, you did a rail that no one was doing. Yeah, yeah, the little whoop T like flat to C yeah. kind of, yeah. You did switch two prets for, yeah, which yeah. is still good. Yeah, yeah. But I think I was like, maybe it's that, but still, I think. Yeah, I think it was, for me per personally, I think it was the hip where I did a switch two into the hip mm -hmm. and I didn't grab. That's what I've heard a lot that like mm. kind of looked like I was going to grab and I didn't get it because I was. Were you trying to? Yeah, yeah, mm. for sure. In a best of both worlds, I would. Switch would, to mute. Yeah, mute or safety or whatever. I don't remember what I was trying, but yeah, it was a. I was bummed that I missed that, and I was bummed that it um, screwed up my score so much because I didn't think it was like actually something bad. Mm -hmm. I thought a grab would be a bonus instead of not a grab being a disadvantage. You know. Yeah. But what else? I don't. Judging judging skiing is probably like the hardest thing to do accurately. So, and even even then like someone's going to be unhappy at some point like you can't yeah. so whatever and that's something that i talked a bit with abm this winter after x games mm -hmm. with the whole controversy of the bigger comp yeah where henrik didn't got a low score yeah and um with slope style with everyone like because abm got fourth in both big air and slope style mm -hmm. this year so i was asking him like <laughs> are you well, mad <laughs> are, not are you mad but like yeah just talking about how difficult it is and yeah. that's exactly what he was saying he was like yo like judging is so hard that i have no complaints whatsoever yeah yeah for sure you can't like it's gnarly you talked about that a couple minutes ago of like a certain slope style run versus another like sometimes out they're equivalent kind yeah, of yeah yeah and it's the same thing like this year with the bigger contest like the guys it, it wasn't the, the like dub 10 mute era like no we're yeah. far from that like yeah. everyone were doing different tricks yeah 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 like for between sure. regetli's triples to abm's triples to a hall's dub 16 knows it's like yeah yeah how do you yeah yeah how do you yeah for sure no i know i mean i i, I used to judge for fun whenever a contest was on tv mm -hmm. <laughs> i'd judge it and now i don't even bother with it i'm just like oh, i'll see what they think yeah it's like it's kind too hard having your own i think i did that for the olympics yeah I, mean, uh, I, I would have done it i took yeah. notes yeah i don't remember exactly but yeah i remember taking yeah. notes and like just it's fun for yeah, yeah for the fun of it like yeah. what were what your results would be yeah it's hard man because mm -hmm. there's what like six hits maybe seven yeah six let's say seven. seven hits yeah and i was i remember i was kind of noting the tricks and if they had any flops or anything right kind of to keep track like an hour down the road yeah 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 man it's so much like if it's 50 runs in total with seven it's each yeah yeah so you went you you got your dream kind of which is not the dream you had as a child i guess but still you got to the olympics yeah that was the goal of the moment yeah, yeah. the childhood dream was going to x games and winning yeah but third is fine yeah third is fine <laughs> then a goal that came while you were in your career yeah made it happen yeah what was the um the aftermath of the olympics for your being there like were you kind of celebrating of like okay i'm there were some tr struggles along the way but i made it happen um no i exhaled deeply and i said thank god it's over <laughs> <laughs> but i was still hungry actually and i thought I was going to keep on skiing a lot. I went, we had a training camp in Mammoth. I went there and I was like, meh, I don't feel like doing tricks right now. Screw that. So then. Do you think it was the, the, um, the old Olympic process that drained you? Yeah, kind of. And also it, for me, mostly it wasn't the, the Olympic process more than it was the fact that I was putting myself in a situation that scared me every day. Every time I was going skiing, every time there was a training camp or something, mm -hmm. it's like, shit, what if the conditions are perfect and it's all up to me mm -hmm. to push my limits, which is not something I want to do anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, and I feared those situations and like, yeah. So that, that was mentally for me, that was, was, that's what was mentally draining me. Mm -hmm. So training camp in Mammoth, I didn't do anything. But is that something that has to do with the 
structure of Team Canada, which is like they pay for your trip, they pay for such and such. And so when you're going with them, it's never like a mellow day. Yeah, you're never on vacation. Yeah. No, you're not. But they're not like writing down how many times you did a dub 12 this trip and mm -hmm. making sure that you get up to 10 because mm -hmm. you need to do 10. Like, you don't have a quota. No, like none of, none of that. Like, And honestly, the coaches were so chill. Like they weren't putting, they weren't putting extra pressure on me or anything. I think at that point what I was feeling was – obvious that i should be feeling that way because i had basically been doing the same jump run since 2015 mm. like for three years i was doing the same three jumps so like i had to up my game and i knew i wasn't going to do that and like it became obvious at one point it was like the big elephant in the room mm -hmm. that no one was really mentioning but we all knew he was there mm -hmm. yeah so hung out all summer um trip to new zealand came up i was like no i don't want to go like i i don't feel like going i'm not and so i didn't go and then trip to sauce Fe came up uh i went i skied okay i hadn't skied since the trip to mammoth so i was kind of rusty so i just i got to not do a triple and have it being justified because i hadn't been on snow for so long and then stubai There was the first World Cup of the season. Practiced. Did my run in practice like once or twice. Contest showed up. The weather was shitty. And at that point, I couldn't even do my runs in shitty weather. I needed the perfect weather to do the, the average run mm -hmm. and get 16th or something. Mm -hmm. So then qualities show up. Weather sucks. I'm at the top. And I just look at JF and I'm like, I think that's it. I'm like I think this is. I'm not dropping in. No, no, I won't drop in anymore. And that was super hard emotionally, like being in that moment where I was giving up on that life that I've been living for so long. And and so I actually went on the other side of the mountain and cried a bit for like an hour or something. And then I skied back home and like I knew I knew that day was going to come pretty soon, mm -hmm. but it was still like admitting it was definitely hard for me but did you see it coming like were you questioning it in the months leading up to it or was it just impulsively like on the start of like okay it's over um no i was i kind of felt like it was coming like i remember in the summer actually we went to maximize to ski a bit and we were jumping in an airbag and i was like i don't Not want, i don't want to be doing this anymore actually mm -hmm. like And so I knew, I, I, I thought I'd go for the whole season though and do the contest one more season. But yeah, it kind of came as a surprise to me too to not even ski that year in contest. But I just, I couldn't, I couldn't push through another year of just like getting by. And yeah. And there's the whole factor of if you're not feeling it with the type of stuff you're doing, then you shouldn't do it. Cause yeah. No, with the sure. risk involved in everything yeah exactly exactly and like yeah i know there was too many demons at that point telling me like hey you remember that time you didn't commit to your dub bio hey you remember that time you thought you were gonna go to 16 but mm -hmm. you landed sideways like those guys are just hanging out all the time in every contest so i was like fuck it i'm done and there wasn't uh, the angel saying hey you remember that time at x games <laughs> no. where you won bronze <laughs> no and that guy was being stepped on hard he was being bullied oh yeah shut the fuck up <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so then that was it for a still super successful career um yeah and that's all, what all things it. considered yeah no thanks but yeah i'm super content with the way i went through this whole contest thing and i had so much fun doing it and no i have no regrets but i had to call it mm-hmm Then you had a couple of years, kind of mellow years. I just had one year, actually. Um, just, well, yeah, actually two years. You're right. So 2019, I gave up on the contest scenes. Um, I was still doing a couple trips um, with the team. I think I did two. I did the Do Tour Rail Jam, I believe. I think I won. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I think I won. Classic sure. Alex uh, getting yeah. back to his roots with yeah. rail jams. So I think I did good over there. So that was good for the mental. 
but apart from that that was pretty much it yeah in 2021 right you're getting back uh, onto the yeah. street horse yeah so actually 2020 real quick um i filmed a bit i was still sponsored at that point so i still had to create content and whatnot mm -hmm. and that's why when i linked up with you mm -hmm. and that's when we started shooting a bit we never skied urban we only skied in the park um for a couple of days and got clips and i did rail jams that year so it was overall a pretty good year and then we ended up having this little film project that you basically built all on your own <laughs> i i did the skiing but you did all the rest and so and so now we're here the year after that little film project yeah, yeah. let's stop there fine and i think <laughs> let's get back to it this fall i'm down when it'll be done more a concrete. complete thing yeah more and we can like reflect back on it i agree but yeah we've been uh getting at it yeah for a whole year <laughs> every weekend at least and now we're in the ghost town now we're in murdochville searching for powder but it's, finding rain yeah it's not there but it's okay it's Do the it. we're doing it's a things. sign of uh, god telling you uh, that urban is your <laughs> yeah, way stay in the streets <laughs> i guess so uh yeah thanks for coming on the podcast thanks really for having it. me man um yeah and uh Hype to talk about the movie this fall. Likewise. Cheers. So this is it for episode 18. It was really great chatting with Alex. I really enjoyed our discussion. And I'm really looking forward to this fall to chat about our 2021 movie that we've been working on. Big thank you to this episode sponsors. Access Board Shop, Tree Fort Lifestyles, Jay's Keys, Dick Ann's Restaurant, Plank's Clothing. Peace. Peace.